So it's more crowded in the main dining room for sea day brunch than it has been for dinner. This is really, really popular. Right now, ship time is about 10, 11 a.m. and we didn't have a wait or anything like that, but it's definitely crowded. Um, really good service, you guys. Really, really exceptional service. Lots of people waiting on us. My son already has two drinks and we are looking forward to having a nice leisurely sea day brunch. I ordered the steak and eggs and a Caesar salad Hubby got the huevos rancheros and the little guy got a bagel and some hash browns. So after that, we're going to roam the ship and enjoy a nice uh, sea day full of relaxation and prep up for formal night tonight. So Carnival Splendor kind of has a promenade deck, but it's not on the promenade level. It's actually on deck number three, which is down by guest services and shore excursions at the base of the atrium. We kind of had a hard time finding it, but we just came out here for some fresh air and the waves are super dramatic. Let's go take a look. day today we woke up late roamed around the ship we went on the water slides today which I was shooting down that thing like a bullet but my son could not get any speed today it was a really weird thing so we went in the hot tub warmed up a little bit went back to the cabin took a shower and literally laid around for hours and watched cartoons so for those of you who are worried that we vlog too much we never rest as a family Today we did absolutely nothing, and our vlog is probably showing that a little bit today. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, we, we did go to Sea Day Brunch, which you've already seen in the footage today. Sea Day Brunch was fun. We met some really nice subscribers and had excellent service. And here we are at our second formal night. It's night six in the dining room. So we're in the Gold Pearl lower dining room, and we're in a booth. And I've noticed that the dining room's a little bit more capacity tonight. There's a lot more people here, probably because it's formal night and it's a Sea Day, and there isn't a whole lot going on. So. There is a show tonight. I'm trying to remember which one it is. I think it's Epic Rock. There's two seatings of Epic Rock. One is at 8 o'clock and one is at 10 o'clock. So we're the 8 o'clock seating. So we'll try to make it to the 10 o'clock show tonight and probably just crash and enjoy a nice relaxing sea day tomorrow before we disembark the ship on Saturday morning. But it's been a really nice day. Just kind of nice to do nothing and roam around and visit the gift shops and buy some candy and hang out and watch television. So we'll, we'll see what tomorrow holds. Good morning, it's our last day of the cruise, you guys. It's a little bit bumpy here. If you see some motion in the picture, it's because we are moving. We're pretty far forward on the ship, so we definitely feel a lot of motion, but I have to say it's not as much motion as I felt in an aft-facing cabin in the past, and we're way up on deck 11, so who knew, go figure, or maybe the ocean's just not as rough. Anyway, today is going to be a busy day for us because we have to pack up and get ready to go home tomorrow. So just got back from Sea Day Brunch. We had an amazing experience at Sea Day Brunch today. Got a beautiful table by the window and again, excellent service. I have to say the food was better today than it was yesterday. We made better choices. I got a made to order omelet and my husband got the eggs Benedict and it was just 
it was just a little bit better this time. I don't know what it was about yesterday. It was a little bit off. Um, I think that the choices we made yesterday were just maybe not the best choices. We got the eggs. What did we have? Oh, huevos rancheros. And um, I can't even remember what I had. But anyway, moral of the story, they do an incredible job serving you with big crowds at Sea Day Brunch. And it's just really one of my favorite things about Carnival because there's no laps there's no break in service between breakfast and lunch. So you can basically go, I think it's any time between, let's take a look here. Sea Day Brunch is 8.30 to one. So if you're in the mood for breakfast at noon, you can have it. If you're in the mood for a Caesar salad with bacon, like me, at nine o'clock in the morning, you can have that too. So that's what we did this morning. Now we are back in the room and there's a couple things I wanted to go over today that I think are really important. Number one is what is included in a spa cabin? Because you guys, we have a spa cabin and when we boarded the ship, we had no idea what was included. There's no letter that came with our spa cabin. There was no explanation. We kind of had to figure it out ourselves. So if you're getting a spa cabin, the first thing that I recommend that you do is go to the spa orientation on day one, which is usually at noon, get the tour and then ask them what's included in your spa cabin. That was the best thing that we did. And we sort of figured it out throughout the cruise. So I'm gonna go over everything with you guys. If you're not interested in learning all about what's included in a spa cabin, then skip forward for a few minutes and we'll start talking about disembarkation. But for now, we're just going to go over all of the different perks to having a spa cabin. So the first thing that you should know about a spa cabin on Carnival Splendor, this is ne not necessarily the same for all Carnival ships, is that the cabins are on decks 10 and 11, very close to the spa. So proximity is one of the big selling points. You're, you can literally just put your bathrobe on or your swimsuit and just walk over to the spa for the day. So that's one of the main perks. The number two perk, and probably the one that people enjoy the most, is that you get to use the spa facilities. That doesn't mean you get free spa treatments, you get discounts, but you get to use the Thalassa a therapy pool which is like a giant hot tub with a great view you get to use two steam rooms my favorite being the eucalyptus steam room i even got my husband to go and he totally loved it it's like this incredibly hot and humid um steam room that just pumps out this powerful eucalyptus smell if you're not into the eucalyptus smell there's a regular um steam room that is equally as hot and they all have these beautiful mosaic tiled benches for you to sit in then they have a tepidarium and a laconium which are basically those rooms that you see with the tiled heated benches that are dry one of them's a little warmer than the other um, and they're just gorgeous they look out over the front of the ship so those are there for you to use throughout the duration of your cruise when you're sailing in a spa cabin so another thing that's really awesome about it is that you get discounts on spa treatment so a regular passenger on the ship would get 10% off their first treatment I think it's their first or their second and then 20% off their second and then 30% off their third well when you're in a spa cabin you get 20 30 and 40% discounts off of your spa treatment so that's a big selling point if you plan on getting a lot of spa treatments you can save like $150 total if you do the math, you also get two free classes in the gym. So things that you'd normally pay for like Pilates, yoga, spin classes, and things like that, you get two free ones. You also get some toiletries in your room. This I'll show you in a moment. You get some linen spray, which my son has really enjoyed using. He sprays it all over our pillows. You get a nice little Elemis soap, and these are really nice spa brands, you guys. These are things that they actually use in the spa. And then you get a quartet of little toiletry products in your bathroom. So you get a shampoo, a body lotion, a conditioner and a shower gel and these smell so good they're kind of like a musky eucalyptus smell and they're sort of famous on carnival for being really popular and very well liked we did ask our room stewardess for an extra set and she was willing to give us another one i don't know if you're supposed to do that but she said yes you also get um, slippers for the first two people in your cabin and bathrobes the slippers come in this nice little covered pouch i don't think you're supposed to take them home um i'm assuming not but this is what they look like they're kind of one size fits all. So if you have really big or really small feet, they're probably not gonna fit. I have really small feet, my husband has really big feet. They're probably not gonna be a super good fit for either of us, but that's okay. And then you get these beautiful plush Cloud9 Spa robes. And you're not gonna be able to see this very well, but I just wanna give you an idea of how heavy this thing is. It probably weighs like 10 pounds. So those are really beautiful and plush and a very nice perk for Carnival. Now, when you go visit the spa for the day, you can also ask them, at least on this ship, for some scrub. A lady that I met in the steam room told me this trick. She's like, oh, did you try the scrub? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? She said, just every day when you come in, ask them for scrub and then take it to the shower that's in the, the spa or back to your room and use it. It is the most amazing stuff, you guys. They individually package these little scrubs 
and they're kind of like a sugar scrub. You can see that it's not a huge um, use, but it smells kind of like cocoa butter chocolate and mint all combined and i used this in the shower and it was really rich and oily in a way that's really good if you're getting a lot of sun because it moisturizes your skin so i came out of the shower all glowy and smelling like cocoa butter it kind of smells like this is kind of a weird parallel but it kind of smells like that palmer's cocoa butter cream that you use when you're pregnant sorry guys but ladies you'll know exactly what i'm talking about so i think that i've covered everything that you get with a spa cabin if you've sailed in a spa cabin on carnival and you've had a different experience i want you to let us know in the comments below so that our community can learn a little bit more. So, and also if you have questions, feel free to ask. But next up, let's talk about what the last day on this ship looks like on Carnival Splendor. So today's a sea day. Tomorrow we're pulling into Long Beach. So right now we are about 45 miles off of land from Baja, Mexico. We're in 4,000 feet of water and it's about 68 degrees, beautiful, sunny, but really windy. The water slides closed and the pools are open, but it's pretty windy and cold out there. So here's what's been going on today. They had a debarkation presentation with Mark Q. He is so informative and warm and friendly and funny, you guys. Really amazing cruise director. And he talked a little bit about the ins and outs of the debarkation process, um, how to settle up your account, how to handle liquor when you're leaving the ship, um, things like when and how to get off the ship depending on your situation. And one thing I will tell you guys is it is really unique on this ship. Getting off um, the ship is a little bit different because you actually have the freedom to go down by the coffee shop on deck five and pick out your own luggage tags. So depending on what time you're leaving, you go down and you pick out luggage tags for early or late. That's if you're not doing express debarkation and carrying off your own luggage. If you are doing express debarkation, they're saying that that's going to start at 830, but that is so unique. So they do encourage um, on this ship, you guys, anyone who's new to cruising, they want everyone to either watch the debarkation talk on the television or go to the theater and watch it with Mark Q. They really try to require that every uh, one person from every stateroom goes. So if you're a new cruiser, I think that's really good advice. I don't think it's something you need to do for the rest of your cruising career. But if it's your first time, go check out the debarkation talk. You'll just feel a lot better. No more customs forms, by the way. They did mention that. So tomorrow morning, the breakfast options will be 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. There will be coffee bar open. The Lido pool bar will be open from 7 to 10 and then continental breakfast and a breakfast buffet in the Lido from 6 to 9 30. So they cut off the food at 9 30. Hard stop there it looks like. And then they have breakfast open seating in the gold pearl dining room from 6 30 to 8 30. So if you want to go enjoy one last nice meal in the dining room you can have a leisurely experience on debarkation day. So that's a little bit of information about that. Let's talk finally about what's going on out on the ship today. I did see that coming up very soon, there's an ice carving demonstration. So I might jump down there and try to see how that's going. There is a bust a move dance class going on. There's $3,000 jackpot bingo. Oh, and tonight there's um, a farewell balloon drop. Oh, it's actually in the afternoon. How cool is that? They do it at 4.45 p.m. I really like that because a lot of times on cruises before, my son and I have tried to stay up to like midnight for the balloon drop and it's just too late. This is really cool, but you can also um, pick up an entry sheet to win a prize. So it looks like one of, they're gonna put prizes inside the balloons. And then of course they have punchliner comedy again. They've been really, really popular on the ship and they have PG and rated R types of punchliner comedy. And then the main event for lip sync, lip sync battle is tonight along with a 90s music trivia party. And how could we forget the chocolate extravaganza is in the buffet right now. So we are going to bust out of the stateroom and go have some fun and see what's going on right now. And we'll see you guys a little bit later to show you how we pack up our stuff for disembarkation. See you then. have a magic way to make the last day of cruise all that undepressing but 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 some of you guys asked us to show you what it's like when we're like packing up and doing all that yucky stuff so I thought I would tell you my new strategy to minimize the last day depression because I think we do have a decent methodology that's working for us and that methodology is that early in the day you actually completely pack one of your suitcases with stuff you don't need. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. 
and then we're gonna pack the rest of our stuff later on today that we need or toiletry items that we're still actively using things like that but this is kind of the idea so I'm gonna show you what's in the suitcase and how we're doing this so on this side of the suitcase we have our medium set of e-bags that have served us so well on this cruise by the way we really love them full of stuff that we no longer are going to need and then on this side of the suitcase a few more essentials we're not going to need mainly shoes you guys shoes that we're no longer wearing my son's fins my husband's tripod and just a few essentials that we know that we're totally done with now my next step is going to be to take our laundry that's in the hamper and loosely fold it up and put it into a packing cube and add it to the suitcase because we don't need our laundry anymore. So that's step one of kind of the breakdown um, of the room. So later on tonight, what we'll do is we'll get all of our clothing out for tomorrow for disembarkation and we'll set it in kind of one corner of the room and then we'll pack a second or third bag or whatever and get everything ready to go so that in the morning, all we have to do is sleep in, grab coffee, get dressed, throw on some makeup, take a shower or whatever, and then get off the ship without any stress. We are doing self um, debarkation, meaning that we're walking off all of our own bags. So we have to um, keep everything in the room with us tonight. We're not gonna set it out. But the alternative is that you can have the cruise line take the bags for you and they'll be waiting for you when you get off the ship. So we're gonna try to enjoy the rest of the day and not get bummed. That's the key, right? Do some packing now so you don't have all of that negative stuff to look forward later in the day. Enjoy your last dinner, enjoy the day and try to get some of the packing done early, which is what we're doing. Seven, six, five, So tip number two for avoiding the last day blues is to enjoy specialty dining. Yep, we are back at the steakhouse, which we had always had planned. We made the reservation months ago because we get a little bit sad when we go to the dining room on the last night and they play that farewell song and it just makes me want to cry. So here we are in the steakhouse with our wonderful servers, Martina and Ruth, that also uh, helped us on the second night of our cruise. So it's kind of a nice fitting way to round it out. I have a nice grapefruit martini today, which is lovely. Very, very nicely done. And we have had a very interesting day today. So it's been very cold, not good swimming weather at all. Uh, we went to the balloon drop. We hung out in the room and then our poor little guy fell down and bonked his eye on the, um, the coffee table and had a little incident so thankfully i don't think he needs stitches we were able to take care of it with some neosporin and a band-aid but you guys i have used every single band-aid that was in my first aid kit on this cruise so i'm going to make a little note to myself that next time more band-aids so thank goodness for antibiotic ointment and band-aids on this cruise who knew right blisters and a cut on the eyelid so everyone's fine and we're doing great and he's totally okay so this rounds it out, you guys. It's been a wonderful cruise. Thank you so much for following along for our seven days on Carnival Splendor. We've really, truly enjoyed the service on board. Our room was great. It was so neat to try the spa cabin for the first time and to do something totally different and to just relax as a family during a time of year that we've actually never really cruised before. This is the first time we've ever done a mid-April cruise. Kind of between spring break and summer, it was a very nice, very nice cruise weather-wise and we've so enjoyed the service on the Splendor and the hospitality and the warmth. So until next cruise, we'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for following along.